In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a really quick yet powerful and professional dashboard, wireframe or mock-up design in a matter of minutes. So you've likely used or heard of things like Adobe and Figma, but these tend to be a bit more involved and require a bit more learning. Mockup, as we have here, is a great online web application that allows you to create something like this, which is by no means a Picasso, but will sort of highlight a lot of the core metrics and visuals required in any professional data scoping project. And it will do it very quickly. And it even has a bit of some interactivity and a lot of surprising elements that I didn't think it would have, um, even on the free account that I'll be using for this tutorial. It's important to note I have no affiliation here. I just think it's incredibly helpful. So I'm going to go over a bit of the sort of general introduction to mock-up and then through this together we'll build out a professional looking uh, dashboard wireframe that you would likely use when scoping data projects with stakeholders. Now I'll go over some of the core elements of mockup because like me you may not have used this before so you can simply access it at mockup.ai and from there create a free or paid account or a free trial of a paid account. So you may have used wireframing or dashboard sort of design before from anything as simple as a piece of paper uh, to a complex design application. Well mockup makes this simpler for us. Um, and we can take some individual elements, as you can see here, and straight away sort of project these onto screen in a handy user interface that we could use to get information from stakeholders around their data projects. So that there you can see a bit of an introduction on their page. You can then log in, create a free account. Um, I'm not going to be using any form of paid account for this, just to show you the power of the free application. Now from here, you can see that there's a lot of pre-designed templates for things like, well, this is all categories. Uh, if you're specifically looking at supply chain or logistics data, there's a page there. What I do find with these is they're a bit, they're not the best, definitely, um, but they may provide a good starting point if you have a specific, if you need some inspiration, you just have some KPIs and requirements, this may be a good starting point for you to go ahead um, and develop another sort of mock-up or wireframe based off some of these core elements. But what we'll do is we'll just create a whole new um, wireframe that essentially replicates what I showed at the start of the video. So it's a bit more polished than the examples that Mockup has for us. It's still pretty basic, uh, but it would definitely be suitable in a professional environment. One thing you'll note here, if you want to use the other sort of uh, screen sizes, you would need to have a free trial of a paid membership or just a paid up membership. So I'll just use the iMac or default. And from here, we can go ahead to actually starting to design a mockup that simply. The first thing that we re will require is a header, so some form of title. And what I like here is there's already a good array of elements. I like here that we have a drop down to replicate sort of real world filters or slicers that you may use at the top of a dashboard. So that's already a thumbs up um, and it looks quite good. So we can just rearrange how we place that. We've dragged and dropped it on. We can go back in and click the actual element to get a more specific title. So we want to instruct our end users into what they're looking at. So view your key part level shipment figures would be pretty good. And I like here that within this area, we can upload a logo or any sort of image. So because it's supply chain data, I'm just gonna upload a container image and we can go from there. There are other good elements here I would note, but I'll stick with this one, I like it. And in the customization, I like that we can go ahead and customize these drop downs, which means that this is very easy to give end users realistically what would be a pretty cl close match to what they would require in their dashboard and their data projects. And you may have found if you've scoped with end users before, they don't typically know what they need until you put something in front of them. And then they'll tell you what they don't require and you can start to fill in you know, how you're actually going to develop their dashboard and whichever tool that may be, Tableau, Python, Looker, Power BI, and so on. So there we go, we've got some dummy data there uh, to represent some of our drop down slicers or filters. Now the next thing that I would want is a KPI. So again, really good range, some that replicate a lot of the more common in your Power BI cards that have gotten a lot of traction, so that's good. But I like that within this option in the KPI, We've not just got the option to display figures, we've got the option to obviously compare that against a period, which is quite good in a, in a sort of 
out-the-box wireframing tool so I'm just going to show that um, my percentage of parts shipped was down 10% on the day of production we'd naturally want that to alleviate space you can add things like header bandings but I don't require that within this visual um, and that's a good start and it already tends to look quite professional given how simple this process has been so next up in terms of high level metrics I'll take a horizontal bar chart I like this one here because I can compare the different the different bars for my inbound and outbound shipments so it'd be quite useful to my use case within my my supply chain data here so what i'll do is add a title so again we'll try and make things as easy as possible for the end users within the scoping so inbound versus outbound parts and we can customize so i'll require my legends but i don't actually need those drop downs here but what I really like is even within a sort of scoping or wireframing design tool, you can actually influence some of the data that you may have behind the scenes here with some tabular data, which is quite helpful. And that will directly impact the visual that you have. So let's say we just have some standard items of inventory, like groups of items, containers, packaging, engines, so on. And we can begin to influence how this actually looks for the end users, where we have a curve where the outbound data is sort of outnumbering the inbound, which we may want. Now we can add a geo map, which I like. We have the standard sort of almost tableau map that you may see, but also a clustered map, which would be really good for us to visual where, visualize where certain parts are being held. And there's a bit of an interactive element here, which has surprised me. Again, out of a sort of out the box uh, cookie cutter tool, uh, that's pretty impressive that we can do that, especially on the free platform. So I'll add some buttons for uh, outbound inbound uh, because within my dashboard, I want to have the functionality for people to switch between those two things, uh, those two views. I can align the titles and there we have it relatively easy. And now we've even got some dynamic data. Now likely this wouldn't fit the data points and locations that I'm looking to show, but it gives people a good idea as to the design and it opens up the floor for additional requirements. So now I can input a text box because down here I'm just going to have what's called a simple table, but we can actually make them look quite good. So I'll make uh, let people know what's actually happening there and what they what they need to do or observe. So just say track tracking essentially our latest outbound shipments, and I can add what's called a simple table for a bit more granular data. But although it's uh, we're likely never going to get the exact design of our table right using this tool. Um, it is quite helpful in the amount of different options it gives us. So naturally, I would take the rows and columns down, but we can actually go ahead and customize quite a lot here. So I don't want a title, so I can just remove that because we've already got the text object telling people essentially what to look for. But I can add a shipment ID, so that can be whatever, whatever we like essentially because it's just mock data at this point. Um, and I would naturally probably just keep that column quite blank. Uh, it doesn't need any reinforcement or highlighting of, of certain data points. But what I like here is so for things like shipping on time status, we've actually got a lot of styling options. So we could go ahead and we could um, essentially have markers or indicators that show whether something's on time, which would be very helpful. Um, we can modify the layout here a bit. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, to make use of, of the space as best as possible. And we can go on with sort of filling out that metadata element or that green marker, um, and we can just say what that denotes essentially. We'll meet scheduled ETA, so we might have a live feed um, and some logic with our actual dashboard that, that where we would do this, um, whether that's coming from the application or developed within the dashboard. Um, so we can add that there. And then in the last header, we could have something even like a shipping gateway so passing through different gateways or checkpoints again could be through a sort of live tracking um, a QR code system or um, geofencing from from one of our proprietary systems so again I can even go to that level of detail which I quite like um, and then we could look to implement something similar in our dashboard and just like that we essentially have a finished element what I also like here is now that we've got the dashboard completion, if there's certain things that we like, like a KPI, we can actually go ahead and favorite that. And you can see I have my container image there and the KPI so we can use this quickly later on. We then have the object, uh, the um, option to go ahead and preview some of these items on our screen before we eventually go ahead and 
save these as image files, which would most likely be a PNG. So on the free plan that I'm on, uh, you essentially get 20 free exports. So you can use a PNG to go ahead and export that data, and it will then be there within your file system. And that's all there is to it, creating a professional wire wireframe in just over five minutes. So hopefully you enjoyed that.